SpaceX is getting closer to going to Mars as Elon Musk recently confirmed that SpaceX's first successful orbital Starship launch will probably occur between 1 and 12 months from now. And according to the latest update, Elon Musk hoped to see a crew on the Red Planet by 2029. This is definitely the most awaited milestone of this decade. However, when Starship takes off with travelers abroad, it isn't a trip for rich people. It's for explorers with guts who will probably die. It's dangerous. Uh, it's uncomfortable. Um, it's a long journey. You might not you know, come back alive. Uh, honestly, a bunch of people probably will die. In the so what exactly makes a journey to Mars so perilous? Let's take a seat and we'll find out everything in today's episode of the Alpha Tech Channel. And these are the top ways a trip to Mars could kill you. First, you need to accept that your rocket can explode as soon as it takes off. Elon Musk's plan to go to Mars involves strapping a giant spaceship atop the biggest rocket that humanity's ever built. Because any rocket launch basically involves a long controlled explosion. It's inherently precarious. No matter how many safety tests are done beforehand, if anything goes wrong, if the explosion gets out of control, the people strapped to that big container of fuel don't stand a chance. For context, NASA's Space Shuttle program carried 833 passengers between 1981 and 2011, and of those, 14 people died in explosions and two high-profile accidents. That's a fertility rate of 1.6%. That's vastly more dangerous than driving and a bit riskier than climbing Mount Everest. The fatality rate for the Apollo program to the moon was even higher at 9%. But of course, SpaceX would be using newer, more complex rockets to get to Mars, so it's tough to say what the actual odds of death would be. Possibly much higher. Note that a couple of SpaceX's smaller Falcon 9 rockets have either exploded on the launch pad or blown up mid-flight. Engineers and rocket scientists can improve that, but it's unlikely the risk will ever be zero. If getting safely to Mars is going to be difficult, living there would be an even greater challenge. The most immediate threat to human health on Mars is the low pressure of the planet's atmosphere, which is about a hundred times thinner than Earth. Well, if you're unprotected on Mars, your blood would boil even in an ambient temperature. All the gases that are dissolved in your bloodstream would just turn into bubbles like popping a can of Coke. You would fizz to death. And that's within seconds. So low atmospheric pressure would kill an unprotected Mars explorer faster than anything else. In addition, Mars low gravity might wreak havoc on your bones and muscles. This is something you don't see in the movies, but the lower gravity on Mars is potentially one of the biggest concerns. It's because human bones and muscles can atrophy terribly in zero gravity. You know, astronauts on the ISS have to exercise for two hours a day to prevent muscle loss, but their bones still lose calcium over time, and they don't recover until they come back to Earth. Even with exercise, their bones will grow weaker, making injury in an unforgiving environment far more likely. Mars low gravity might also erode other capabilities that are crucial for everyday functioning. For instance, NASA has found that eyesight can mysteriously deteriorate in zero gravity. Astronaut John Phillips went from perfect 2020 to 2100 after just six months on the ISS. Astronauts also find it harder to sleep in zero gravity and many passengers in space suffer insomnia. Next, you could suffer serious radiation exposure from a solar flare. For the entirety of the journey to Mars and back, astronauts are likely to endure much higher exposure to radiation than they would on Earth. Outer space isn't empty, it's teeming with high energy particles blasted out by the sun and other stars. Here on Earth, we're protected by our planet's magnetic field, which deflects them away. But once our Martian voyagers leave Earth, they'll be exposed. For the most part, this is a mid-sized problem. When NASA sent the Curiosity rover to Mars, it found that the one-way trip alone would expose unshielded astronauts to an extra 0.3 sieverts of radiation equivalent to 24 CAT scans. That's 15 times the annual radiation limit for workers at a nuclear power plant, but not fatal. The more worrisome part is what happens if the sun erupts and sends a major solar flare hurling towards the spaceship mid-flight. In that case, the astronauts could be exposed to much higher potentially fatal doses. The flares are unpredictable, although with a proper monitoring system in place, we could in theory warn the astronauts beforehand. 
no one wants to be caught out on a spacewalk. So any journey will have to think about how to protect its passengers. The spaceship that transports the astronauts, for instance, might store its water and fuel such that it could be used as a barrier in case of a flare. Water is an excellent shield, McKay says. I don't want to trivialize the problem, but I think it's solvable. Meanwhile, the radiation problem persists once astronauts get to Mars because the planet has no ozone layer and a weak magnetic field. Any humans on the surface would be pelted with both cosmic rays and UV rays from the sun at far higher doses than they get on Earth. Martian explorers would have to spend a good chunk of time indoors, perhaps even underground, shielding their habitat with layers of dirt. And of course, another big challenge of living on Mars is figuring out how to get safe drinking water and oxy. Earth's atmosphere is about 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen with trace amounts of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases. By comparison, Mars' atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide. We need to breathe oxygen. There's no free oxygen in the Martian atmosphere. You cannot breathe this gas. You would die of hypoxia within minutes. Another thing you definitely can't live without is water. In fact, there are small quantities of water in the soil and vapor in the atmosphere, but most of it exists as ice. Perhaps the most viable option for the first humans on Mars is to live on their spaceship at first, using it as a habitable base for the building of a city. There's been talk of terraforming Mars, engineering it to make it more Earth-like by creating enough oxygen so humans can breathe. However, that's a long way off from the near-term goal of first-time travelers, which is simply to survive the night. Finally, you can freeze. It's time to get acquainted with your new home's weather conditions. Mars temps average around minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit, but swing wildly depending on the season, the time of day, and the location, and ranging from 86 degrees Fahrenheit, that's nice, near the equator to negative 284 degrees Fahrenheit near the poles. This means you must be equipped to battle harsh, bitter cold. And this is something that would kill you over the course of a few hours if you're not properly warmed. But it's a glorious adventure and uh, it'll be amazing, an, an amazing experience. And your name will go in history. Yes. Are you ready for such a majestic death? Share your ideas in the comment section. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.